it is the most commonly seen anemia in hospitalized patients. Hi, so today's video is about anemia of chronic disease. This is the second video of hypochromic microcytic anemias. The first one was about iron deficiency anemia. And if you haven't seen that, please check that out as well. So second hypochromic microcytic anemia is the anemia of chronic disease or the anemia of inflammation. And as the name says, it's anemia that happens when a person has a chronic disease or inflammation going on. The anemia presents one to three months after the onset of the main culprit. It's actually a chronic disease, an inflammation, a chronic inflammation, chronic infection, or a malignancy. And autoimmune disease is also associated with ACD. All these things can trigger anemia of chronic disease. So anemia of chronic disease is actually a result of the immune system being activated and so it produces cytokines and the cytokines kind of mess up the mechanisms for iron metabolism. So what are cytokines? Okay, let's go back to the main problem here. So the main problem in ACD is that the patient has a chronic disease and whenever that is, you know, an inflammation, malignancy, um, a microorganism, anything that can activate the T cells of the body. The T cells actually induce the body to produce cytokines. So the production of cytokines lead to a decrease of iron in the circulation. And so since there's less iron in the circulation, this affects your hemoglobin production. So there's not enough iron to produce hemoglobin. So basically, you don't have enough iron to proceed with erythropoiesis. And this is due to the presence of cytokines that were triggered by the T-cells due to your chronic disease, whatever that may be. So it's a cascade of events that leads to anemia. This is actually the second most prevalent anemia, second to iron deficiency anemia. And it is the most commonly seen anemia in hospitalized patients. So lab findings for anemia of chronic disease. Let's start with the peripheral blood. So for 60 to 70 percent of the cases you see normal chromic normocytic cells RBCs which is kind of strange but I guess it's just because this is just a mild to moderate anemia so it's not exclusively just hypochromic cells but 30 to 40 percent of the cases do have microcytic hypochromic anemia. Let's proceed with the iron studies. So serum iron and percent saturation is decreased. Ferritin levels are normal to increase and that's the main difference between this anemia and the iron deficiency anemia because as I've said earlier iron deficiency anemia don't have iron in their source, there's no ferritin, it's decreased. But the differential diagnosis between IDA and ACD, anemia of chronic disease, is the transferrin receptor concentration. Now, what is the transferrin receptor? This is pretty much the entry point of transferrin bound iron into the RBCs. So, this is, it's, this is the gate. So, TFR is normal in ACD, anemia of chronic disease while it's elevated in iron deficiency anemia. Also, TIBC, again, is increased in iron deficiency anemia and it's decreased in anemia of chronic disease because your body knows that it has iron in the storage. And so that's why it doesn't produce any more transferrin. And that's why TIBC is actually decreased in ACD. And lastly, the ferritin for IDA is decreased Whereas in the anemia of chronic disease, it is increased. So if you stain the bone marrow cells with Prussian blue, you will visually see that there's a lot of iron in the bone marrow. So the treatment for anemia of chronic disease would be just like IDA, you have to treat the primary culprit. And that is, you know, whatever chronic disease the patient has. And then you have to treat the anemia after that. Eventually, the anemia corrects after the primary disease is 
controlled. Also, since they already have a lot of iron in their marrow and it's just not utilized, uh, iron supplements are avoided for anemia of chronic disease. And that's pretty much it for ACD or anemia of chronic disease or anemia of inflammation. Okay, so we finally reached the end of the video. I hope this video helped you. And if you want more hematology content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. The next one will be about sideroblastic anemia. So thank you. See you on the next one. Bye.